Hi everyone and welcome to this broadcast today. I'm Dr. Daniel Domini and I believe today that you will be blessed as we continue our uh, study mountaintop and valley low experience. Welcome to this uh, broadcast. Welcome wherever you are today. Thank you for joining. Please let someone know that I'm on so that they can tune in. And I believe that you will be extremely blessed as we continue the uh, mountaintop and the valley low experience. When you're facing impossible situations, there are impossible situations that we are facing. And um, some of you right now, this, what you're going through right now might be your impossible situation. Maybe one of many. Maybe you are facing a situation that is literally impossible while you are climbing up, while you're getting to the place where God wants you to be, beyond just another level, but you are going up and your going up is not just another level but another dimension where you will experience greatness you'll experience great things the great things that god has spoken over your life maybe you up right now you're going up but now all of a sudden you start facing impossible situation and i will come to that I will go into details and what the impossible situation might be and the things that we can consider impossible situations. But maybe you are at the mountaintop already and yet you are experiencing some impossible situation because you thought that the mountaintop experience would be the place of safety. The place where you made it. No more problems, no more situation, no more difficulties, no more impossible situations. And so I made it. I, I made it to the top. So, but now you realize that even though you are at the top, you are still facing difficulties. Or maybe you are descending. Maybe some of you today. You fell. You fell so hard. You fell from grace. And everyone that you knew, at least most of them are turning their back against you. They say bad things about you, but these were friends. And oftentimes, when you find yourself Falling off the cliff, falling off the mountaintop experience. Those are oftentimes moment where you're alone, where no one is there for you, where they consider you an outcast. I have good news for you because we'll talk about that today. The impossible situation in the mountaintop and the valley low experience. So thank you guys for joining us. See you. Make sure that you invite someone to be part of this study. Hallelujah. So we started off with uh, number one. Number one was when God, God always supplies when he calls. That was number one. God always supplies when he calls. And number two is that God himself will accomplish the task. Keep in mind, I just this is just a recap of what we've done already. So week one is uh, number one, God always supplies when he calls. Number two in week one was God will accomplish the task he will do it um number three when is obedience is the only uh it, it, it's, it's almost impossible what we do that was number three number four his calling is always above your ability 
His calling is always above your ability. Number five, when the vision is dead, what do you do? The vision all of a sudden die. You have a vision. God gave you a clear vision to do whatever he calls you to do, but the vision die. Passion die. What do you do? We did that. And today we'll do number six. You know, uh, it's number seven, because we did six last week. Six is when you, when you um, exhausted all your resources, all your resources. You can go back in the previous studies and you will see all this. Number seven is where we will start today, the impossible situation. The impossible situation. And I want to bring this uh, closer to you. It's not just an impossible situation, but I want to bring this home. Uh, into your relationship with your spouse. One of the main impossible situation that we want to discuss at this moment is a relationship. Is maybe your marriage is at an ugly end. Not just an end, but a very ugly one. You are climbing, but your relationship is in danger. What do you do when you're almost there and your relationship is in danger? Your relationship is in danger so much so that your marriage is collapsing. You see your marriage that you have worked on, that you have built for years is crumbling down. What do you do? Because First Peter, First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1 says, Wives, remember those verses? Because you're finding yourself at a place right now. But, but, but the Bible says here now, said the wives, in the same way, submit yourself to your own husband so that if any of them do not believe the word of God, they may warn them over without words by the behavior of your wife. So all these things, wives, they submit themselves, husbands submit themselves, and you have a great relationship. You are building because you, you're so close to God. Because you gave your heart to God. You're so close. You have a vision. You're going up. We are at a place where everything is going good. Because we did 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Now we did Genesis chapter 2, verse 21, where the Bible says that that is, that is why a man leaves his father and his mother and unite or cleave to his wife and they become one flesh. So you did all that. Now you are one. You are doing great as a family. And you're going up. You're building together. You both are building your empire. But now in the midst of the building, you find yourself. You find in the midst of the building, midst of climbing up, you realize that while you're building, your empire together. Why are you building on the vision that God gave you? Your marriage is failing. My God, I want to talk to some people today. Where is your relationship today with your spouse? Where is your relationship with your wife? Where is your relationship with your husband? It is crucial that you understand this. This is one of the impossible situations when marriage failed very ugly. This is impossible because it's destroyed. You can't reconcile. People separated and they go their own way. How can two go together unless they agree? So maybe at this moment, you're struggling because you, you love God and you're doing what is right, but your family is failing. Destruction has hit home. 
I mean, you heard it across the street. You, it happened to other people, but with you, you never anticipated that. I'm not going to go too far and too deep into my own personal life because then you have to come to one of my conferences or seminar to hear more about my life stories. But I'm going to give you a bit about my life. Not much, though. <laughs> I was at a place in my life, in my personal life, where I was doing what was right. Like everything to the top was doing what, is, what was right. Love my wife, love my family, love the Lord, love the ministry, love people, love God. Do, I was doing what was right in the sight of God and the sight of man, as church folks say. Doing what was right was there 100%. And then in the midst of that, my marriage was failing. And now you have to understand something. Sometimes your marriage is failing and you don't even realize that your marriage is failing. Because in your mind, everything is good at home. I'm just doing the work of the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm building the church. I'm building people. I'm encouraging people while their own marriage is failing. But, 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 but I'm going a step further. But I was at the same time working on my marriage. So this is what going to blow your mind. I'm not talking to everybody tonight. I'm talking to a small group of people that did everything right and still doing everything right, but yet things are going wrong. What is right? Being faithful to the Lord. Praying, going to the Bible study, teaching, building, preaching, doing everything. At home, spending time with my wife and with my children, I'm doing everything in that, in that fashion. Being a loving and caring husband. But yet, I didn't see that destruction was coming. How can one not see the destruction that's coming into your own life. But you can see what's going on in everybody else's life. How can one not see the destruction that's coming into your own family while you're prophesying to the whole world, while you're traveling and preaching to everybody? So everybody's receiving your anointing. Why? How? How is that possible? As a faithful husband that I was, I was prophesying, I was preaching, I was teaching, I was doing marriage seminars and conferences and, and, and prophetic conference and leadership conference. They, they will fly me in into Europe, into other part of South America. Now I'll go and preach. Preach in North America. And not only that, but I'm a licensed counselor as well. So I will counsel people and save marriages. And I was working on my marriage at the same time at home. But at the same time, my marriage was failing. I, I, I did everything right, but it was failing. Scrumbling down while I thought that everything was right. Why in the world? What happened that I couldn't see what was going on at home? What do you do, folks? What do you do? I mean, those are the serious questions that we have to ask. This is a study, but, but, but if, if you don't want me to start talking about my personal life. Let's stick to the study. But this is a serious question. Listen to me. What do we do when we do everything right? 
want to be the man, the, the caring husband, the husband that provide, protect, and care for their family. What do you do when you've done everything what you're supposed to do as a man? You provide love, you provide care, you provide everything what your spouse need. Now, now what your spouse, not only men, but women too, what your spouse need, you, you've done everything for your spouse. You've done everything for that man. You did everything for him. And yet, you end up in a divorce. And yet, you, 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 it's, it's, you, 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 you're working, you're working on it. You want it to work, and it's not working. It's not working. And, 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 and you did a deep search inside of you to see and make sure that, that God is well pleased with you. And you know, as far as you can see, you know that all the things that you have done so far is right. You, 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 you know that I did what God asked me to do, but yet, my family is failing. What do you do? I have multiple answers for you. <laughs> what do you do? You know, you got to understand something. When you, at this point, the impossible situation, Ephesians 5.33, However, each one of you also must love his wife and uh, as he loves himself. And the wife must respect their husband. Even if you see these things are crumbling down, the best thing in your mind is to save, is, 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 is to help your, your, your relationship, is to save it. Don't stop loving. Don't stop loving, but you don't understand, preacher man. I understand your, your Bible thing, but this, I've tried everything. It's not working. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't give up. And at times, I'll be honest with you. Even if you've done everything, yet it'll slip away. Because you have no control over other people's action. You don't. No matter how hard you try, can I get an amen? Can I get a witness? Say amen or say ouch. No matter how hard you try, there's nothing you can do safe. We, we, we have to talk about this thing in the church. There's nothing you can do to save it. Oh, you, you need to pray. You need to pray. Okay, okay, hold up. Hold up. I've prayed. I'm still praying. Why you talk? I'm praying. But I've done everything. And yet it's slipping away. Those are the moment that we call impossible situation. Things that you have no control of, things that you have, you have more questions than answer. Yes, it's okay to go to God and say, God, I need an answer. It's okay to question God. It's okay to be frustrated in this war because this is a higher war. We're we, we, we going up somewhere, but do not lose sight of the top where you're heading to. Just because somebody bailed out on you, doesn't mean you should bail out on God. Let me say it again. Just because your spouse bailed out on you, they walked away from you, they abandoned the covenant, that doesn't mean you should do the same to God. Don't walk away from God. Remember, you're going up. Don't lose sight. You know, I I can talk today till next year about relationship and about divorce and marriage. 
That's why when my new book comes out, you gotta get it. I went through a horrible to a terrible divorce 10 years ago. I didn't see it coming. Nope. I didn't see it coming. No. I've seen a lot of things coming, but this one, I didn't. And I'm serious. If you think I'm joking, think again. I am very, very serious. I did not see this one coming at all. This one came, he overtook me. I pay a horrible price. I paid a horrible price. But one thing I didn't do, I didn't lose sight of the mountaintop where God was taking me. I didn't lose sight. And the last thing you want to do, and I'm helping somebody right now, the last thing you want to do is to sit there and throw ashes in the air and licking your sore and having a pity party. Last thing you want to do is to constantly complaining and blaming the other person. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how messed up your ex was because now it's your ex. It doesn't matter how messed up they are. You cannot sit there and constantly blaming them because that's not the time for that. Why am I giving counseling session right now? That's not what we're supposed to stick to a Bible study, right? <laughs> you cannot sit there, but I'm gonna give you this nuggets because I know somebody need it right now. You cannot sit there and blaming your ex. Quit blaming your ex. You gotta move on with your life. You gotta move on. You gotta you if you if if, if you stay there, you will end up in a cycle, and 40 years from now on, you still blaming your ex. That thing will grow in you. That thing can go deep. That thing, that thing has roots that, 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 that are strong and powerful. Those, those roots will go so deep that, that, that at your deathbed, you're still talking about your ex. That you're still bitter about your ex. So, so for those of you that are already gone through it, And those of you that are going through it, it's slipping out. It, 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 it's leaving you no matter what you do. It, yeah, it, it, there is such a thing as that. In the church, oftentimes, we don't talk about those things. And we give counseling. We give counseling. I said we give prim premarital counseling. We give, we give uh, couples counseling. But how often do we give counseling to people who are divorced? Because we consider them outcasts. Oh, you divorced. Oh, you, you, you go into hell. You can't remarry because that's fornication. Uh-huh. How often time do we give courses on how to get divorced? Oh, well, what are you talking about? We're not supposed to talk about how to get divorced and how to stay married. But I'm talking to a handful of people today, not everybody. What if you've done everything and you literally see your marriage, your spouse is leaving you, is, is slipping away. What do you do? You got to keep living. Stop the blame game. This is supposed to be Bible study. I'll, I'll come back next week. And let me come back next week and, and continue my Bible study because... Uh, this is good. I'm, uh, somebody, somebody is being blessed right now. Uh, you got to fight for your family. Fight to the bitter and fight. Don't give up. Let Ephesians 5.33 help you. Love, love, love your wife. Love, love your wife just like Christ loved the church. Love your wife like you love yourself. You love yourself, right? Love your spouse just like you love yourself. Love your spouse. No matter, you know it's failing. Even if it's failing, keep on loving. Don't, don't, don't quit. Look, 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 your victory lies in this. This is going to help you to keep your sanity. I'm telling you. This is going to help you. I'm not telling you because I read a book. I'm telling you because this is what helped me, what helped me through this whole thing, okay? So your sanity is keep loving the person. Do not allow hate to control you. Do not allow hate to interfere with your mind. 
Because at the moment you allow hate, you're going to start hating this person. And it's going to be difficult for you to restore or to recover. Remember, you're going through a hardship and, and, and somebody will die because a, a divorce is like somebody is dead. It's, it's somebody will, will die. You will go through the five stages of grief. Yes, you will go through them. But what will help you to recover is to love the person no matter what. You're not going to allow hate. Come closer to me. You're not going to allow hate. Because that won't help. Don't allow hate. I don't care what the person did to you. Do not allow hate. You allow hate. That thing will destroy you, not the person. They already messed up. They messed you up already. They messed your credit. They messed your reputation. They messed your family. They messed your good name. They messed your house. They messed your family, your children. They literally destroy you. They, 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 they have everything. They took everything, but they, they don't allow them to take what God placed inside of you. And that's the love of Christ because the love will conquer. The love will help you to overcome whatever situation it is. The adversary is there to encourage you to hate. But the love of Christ is right there to say, do not allow hate, but love the person regardless. Because all the enemy, they have, for, for some reason, they, they, they help you to, to they, they make more enemies. You make more enemies during, during this period. And some of you are making enemies right now as I speak. A lot of people are going to hate you. A lot of people are going to despise you. A lot of people are going to put you on the side. A lot of people will count you out. But do not allow hate. Keep on moving. Remember, we're going up to the mountain. You have a mission. Keep going. Keep going. Those are the impossible situations that can mess you up. But you cannot lose your sanity. If you, you, you need to stay it's insane. You cannot lose it. If you lose it, you've lost it. Can I say it again? If you lose it, you've lost it. Everything else is gone. The person who's supposed to be there for you is gone. And now it's you. Why do you want to lose you? May God bless you, and I want to pray for you right now. As a matter of fact, let's pray. Let's pray. For those of you that are going through a divorce, so many of you are thinking of filing. So many of you, your, 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 your marriage is slipping away. It's slipping away. It's slipping away. Oh, my God. Father, thank you, Jesus, for somebody that's listening to me right now. It's going through a bad, ugly breakup, an ugly divorce, God. Father, they've done everything. I'm, I'm not talking about everybody. I'm talking about that one person that has done everything what they could, and yet they are failing. Lord God and, and Father, I pray. I pray, my God, for this person that you will strengthen them, Lord. Father, you will help them to stay in your love. And Father, no matter what comes, God, they will stay in love they won't allow hate to control them they won't allow hate to interfere hate will knock on their doors as a matter of fact hate is knocking on their door as I pray but in the name of Jesus God I pray for strength God I pray for strength God that they will do away with hate and Father they will allow love to prevail in the name of Jesus, love to prevail in the impossible situation as we're going up the mountain. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something, friend. It is possible. There is restoration because God restored me. And after 10 years, yeah, 10 long years, a lot of people didn't even know I was single. After 10 long years, God blessed me with my beautiful wife. So, yes, I am married. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So, there is restoration. 
a lot of people ask me to talk a little bit more about me because they don't know much about me, I guess. Some people. And this is one of the face. Many faces. Oh. I want to pray with you if you need to give your heart to the Lord. I want to give you the opportunity. I'll come back another day and we can continue this conversation. If you like this conversation, just shoot me a text, shoot me the hearts, let me see what's going on. If you want to know how to serve the Lord, how to continue with Him, pray with me. Say, Father, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed this prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. Please find a Bible-believing church where you can learn more about the Lord. And you can also um, send me an email or text so we can continue leading you in this path with the Lord. May God bless you, folks. May God bless your family. And uh, keep on praying for one another. Pray, especially those here in the States. Please pray. Pray for the upcoming election. Pray for the peace in the United States. We need your prayer. And uh, all over the world, people are still in lockdown in many places, many parts of the world. Please follow the, um, uh, the instructions of your health officials. God bless you and I'll see you next time. God bless your family. Blessings.